Welcome to Learning Self-Reliance. Today I'm going to do a, a video about my personal bug out bag. Uh, a couple weeks ago I did a video on a starter bug out bag I did for my sister, but this is the bug out bag that I have. Uh, I've put a lot of work into this and I uh, started kind of building one of these when I was about 12 and doing Boy Scouts, but I didn't understand I thought I'd kind of come up with the idea of coming up with a bag that had everything I needed in it. Uh, and I was building one of those myself. And over the years, it's developed into this bag. Um, this bag is intended for an extended long-term use. It's not a 72-hour kit. Uh, it's got a lot more than that. Uh, for example, like uh, rechargeable batteries and a solar panel and things like that for an extended use because just a couple of spare double A's or something for a flashlight. It's only gonna last you a couple of days. Uh, but this is intended for reusable and sustainable use for months, if possible, uh, as long as I can get food. Um, so let me take you guys in for a close up and we'll go through the details of the items in this bag. And down in the description, I'm going to have a link to a Google spreadsheet that you guys can look at to see uh, to link to the specific items on Amazon or on the external websites that uh, they're sold at. Alright, I've got my spreadsheet here. I'll make sure to uh, include a link for that for you guys. Um, on my bag, let's just talk about some of the features of the bag real quick. Uh, this is a Teton 65 liter hiking pack, is what they call it. And uh, I like this one so far, it works pretty good. Uh, I didn't go with a camo because I think that attracts too much attention uh, in city areas and things like that. So I went with just kind of a simple hiking pack. But on the bottom of this here I have a uh, camo rain fly that I can pull out underneath the pack and make it camo if I wanted to. Uh, I put my food on the outside here. I've got some freeze dried food. Um, Freeze dried food is awesome, but it can get uh, uh, crunched up pretty easily. So I have it on the outside of the pack, uh, on the back here, because I think that's one of the least likely areas to get destroyed, except for you know sitting down. But I just got to be a little bit careful there. But uh, this helps protect it. And this is a uh, dry bag that it's in. On the top of the bag, I have the things that I really want to get to the most. So on the top and the outside is the things that I really want to get to the fastest. So first thing is my fire kit. I've put together a couple of items in here myself. Not No real original thoughts on quite a lot of it though, but uh, this is an Altoids tin that's uh, used for charring cloth. For anybody who doesn't know what char cloth is, this is some old jeans that I had and you poke a little hole in the top to let gases escape and you throw this into the fire and it will uh, remove uh, everything but the flammable stuff out of the cloth and so you can easily light this with a ferro rod or even a flint. Uh, then I have a uh, Fresnel lens. This is a magnifying glass that is uh, plastic and thin and flexible. So this is my longest source of fire is this Fresnel lens here because ferro rods run out uh, you know, you have to find new flint or something like that. But this is my longest term uh, obtain, uh, uh, starting fire. And then I've got some uh, steel wool here that can be ignited with a battery. Or it's also obviously useful for cleaning firearms and knives and things like that. A mini backup ferro rod here and uh, char cloth. So that's in this Altoids tin. Then I have... Uh, some fire starting discs. They, uh, this is sold by the Pathfinder store. It's called Mini Inferno. Uh, on the top here is some of them that I made myself. This is just like a facial uh, wipe cotton that you can get like a, you can get like a hundred of them from the dollar store for a dollar. And then uh, it's just covered in paraffin wax from a candle. Uh, on the bottom here, these are the ones that come from the Pathfinder store. I really can't see a difference in burn time or ease of igniting between the ones I made with just melting wax and putting on a, a facial 
uh, wipe or between the ones from the Pathfinder store. I really don't see a difference, but uh, the tin is really nice and it's just like the perfect size for these. So I keep those in there. And then of course I could poke a hole in this and use this for uh, making char cloth as well. Then I have a lighter. I like to use uh, Bic lighters. I just find them to be a little bit more quality, a little bit more robust. I find that the cheaper lighters, they kind of bend and things on the top, and I really don't like that. And just some uh, fine and coarse uh, steel wool in the top here that, of course, is used for cleaning and for starting fires with a battery. Then I have my compass. This is a, let's see here, K&R Alpine Compass. Uh, this compass is $82 uh, right now, and I put a couple of extra uh, things on here. On the top here is my uh, declination, and I've got some kind of conversion between yards and meters and a mile and things like that, and the ratios in between those that I just uh, wrote on a sticky note and then taped to help waterproof it a bit. Uh, this feature, this compass has got a quite a few uh, nice features. The mirror on here uh, is actually metal, and so it's it's uh, not glass and it's not going to break so easily. The spindle of the uh, compass here uh, is actually housed in a uh, flexible rubber housing that you can, uh, you can, I don't know if this is showing up too well on camera, but you can just push your fingers into it and it doesn't break or anything like that. It's really nice. It's got oil in there as, where, as well with no bubbles and uh, uh, easy to use uh, doghouse here. And uh, it also has a magnifying glass, uh, which is a good backup magnifying glass for starting fires with and using maps and things like that. And it's also got several markings for uh, interpreting and using maps, which is pretty nice. Um, Next, I've got my headlamp here. This is a Nightcore, Nightcore HC90 headlamp. Uh, this flashlight, this headlamp here, uh, is pretty awesome. I keep the uh, battery a little bit unscrewed as it re recommends in the manual so it doesn't uh, continually discharge. Uh, it goes up to, I think, 960 lumens. Um, it's got a variable brightness setting here so you don't have to cycle through it or anything. You just move it to how bright you want it and then just leave it there. Uh, it's also got red and green and blue lights. The blue light is pretty useful for uh, tracking game in nighttime uh, because it shows up blood really well on the ground. It kind of makes it look black. Uh, green is useful as a secondary color for reading maps and red is used to uh, not ruin your night vision so much and for uh, reading and things like that. But this is a great little headlamp. It takes an 18650 battery um, I recommend not getting the uh, battery with the, or I'm sorry, the flashlight with the battery that they usually offer with it. They usually offer like a 2300 or a 2600 milliamp hour battery. The, uh, they also, on Amazon, they have these Olight 3400 milliamp hour 18650 batteries that are still protected. They, I much prefer these ones and they fit in the housing really well. I have one. Uh, Nightcore brand uh, battery for this light and the battery, the, the uh, skin of the battery here got peeled off just pushing it into the flashlight. For some reason the Nightcore flashlight doesn't fit the Nightcore battery. I don't know why, but the Olight ones here seem to work really well. But I use this guy and it works pretty well. It's also got some O-rings and stuff so it's waterproof. I think up to a meter or two usually keep that little bit unscrewed so that it doesn't uh, discharge too much. Then I have a uh, write in the rain notebook. I have this on top because I might need to write something down really quick, some directions or something that I might hear on the radio and might not have time to dig through my bag to grab a piece of paper. Then I've got a pen here. This is just a uh, simple pen, nothing special, but uh, one thing I did is I wrapped some Gorilla clear repair tape around here. This is used for resealing uh, inflatable things like a raft or the sleeping mat that I actually keep in here. So this is useful for repairing my sleeping mat if it gets punctured. But I just took a little bit of that and wrapped it around this pen, which is uh, not so low that you can't write, but uh, still comfortable to write with on here. So that's the top of the bag. Those are really the only things I think I'm going to need quickly out of the top here. On the sides, 
right here is I've got uh, a couple of tools here. I've got a tomahawk that I've been debating removing. Um, it's a bit heavy and I'm not sure if I really want to keep it in my pack. Uh, I This is the Two Hawks, uh, let's see, the Two Hawks Long Hunter Tomahawk. Uh, I You can order it with the bottom wrapped, but I just wrapped it up myself and it seems to work all right. This is a 750 test, 750 pound test paracord that I wrapped around here. Um, overall, I really like the Tomahawk and uh, it's really useful, especially for stakes and things like that. Like every time I go camping, uh, if I have a tent, I use this to put in stakes. It works really well for that. But I find that with the heavy duty knife that I have, I really don't use this tomahawk like it's supposed to be used. So I've been debating removing that and I'll probably end up removing it. The This is one of my favorite items in my bug out bag. Sorry, it's a little bit tight in here. All right. This is, I, I usually keep in there, I don't need to pull this whole thing out. Uh, this is the uh, Boreal 21 Folding Bosa by Agawa Canyon. Uh, you guys can click right here if you'd like to see the full review I did of this. But this is an awesome, awesome Bosa. Uh, with this and my heavy duty knife, I can do most of my processing of wood. Uh, nice part about this is that it uses standard 21 inch bow saw blades so you don't have to buy any proprietary special things and it folds up the blades point inward and stuff so it's a really safe uh, bow saw. I've got this leather case for it here but I don't really find that I use it all that much uh, and so I would say this is another this case is another thing that I might end up removing uh, this sorry the sheath for this I might end up removing this because it's kind of heavy but I don't really need it all that much. I don't find that I carry the uh, bow saw by itself very often. But this thing is a wonderful, probably one of the, my favorite parts of this pack is that bow saw because it just goes through wood easily and it's a full sized bow saw. And I've seen some online that are like a triangle shape. So you end up like having a hard time cutting at the front of the blade and things like that. Uh, then I've got this day pack. This is a Silni uh, two ounce uh, day pack. So this unfolds into a small backpack about this big and uh, it is, I think it's a, what is it, 15 liters, something like that, 10 liters. Uh, not a very big pack, but enough that I can pack in a few uh, items like a compass and a water bottle and stuff like that to do a kind of a day scout with after I've set up my camp using this larger pack. Uh, this pocket's mostly empty because I figure I can throw some other stuff in here. Then I've got my cordage in here wrapped around an S beaner. So this cordage is, oh, and this little uh, day pack is about $30, $35 on Amazon. I'll make sure that's in the uh, spreadsheet as well. This paracord is 750 paracord, which is uh, about 15 bucks. And then I have an, this S beam here, which is about $5. Uh, this is useful to have it separated like this because I have 25 foot hanks on each side. These larger ones are 25 foot and then 12 foot and uh, some six foots right here and then some three foots and things like that. So I have it all already separated and in the sizes that I use so that I can quickly access the uh, cordage length that I need. So I keep these on an espionier like that so that I uh, can choose and access the specific size real quickly because I end up I had a whole hank that I'd bring with me, but then I ended up cutting it to length for, you know, I'm trying to hang a, a ridge line or something, and I end up cutting to length for that one specific tree length, and then I've got, you know, this cordage that doesn't make much sense for other situations, so I just have standard ones that I can add, combine two together or something like that, and uh, know the distances between them. On the front here, I keep my uh, Woshun or Waxun or however you pronounce this uh, radio. I have it carabiner to the front here because I had it in the side of my pack and when I was going through some scrub brush, the uh, 
uh, lanyard here caught on a branch and this got pulled out totally silently. I didn't even notice that this was gone when I got all the way home didn't even notice it was there so this got left in the mountains for about a week until I could finally get back there and I found it in the mountains hanging on a bush in the middle of nowhere so that was a huge blessing that I was able to find this radium but I uh, modified it a little bit it comes with a standard uh, rubber ducky uh, dual band antenna the problem with dual band antennas is that the uh, the antenna is a little bit short for one frequency and a little bit too long for the other one so no matter what you're not getting the optimal performance out of your radio so I got this telescoping uh, telescoping antenna from Smiley Radio and it is pretty cool because it has sections that you can collapse and change the size of the antenna so that you can actually match the uh, band or frequency that you're speaking on so on here I wrote with uh, just a permanent marker with for two meters I need zero down so that's all the way up for 440 meters I need two down so I just put two sections down like that now I'm on the actual length that you need for 440 and then for 220 which this radio can't do but this antenna can I need four down so I just put two two more lengths down to get to the 440 uh, band so this is nice and it's nice and flexible and I I had a cousin who we were hunting and he lost one of my antennas so I used some Loctite on this uh, antenna here and to keep it from coming off so this is nice and tightly on there so it's not going to come off but it's still flexible and strong even though this is the telescoping antenna because that was one of my reservations about this is I thought it would break really easily but just collapse it every time after you're done using it and you really don't run into any problems with it. It'll receive well enough on this uh, on this length and you can still listen on things but it's really the transmitting is really what it matters the most because if you have the wrong size your radio is going to bump down its power until it's no longer damaging itself from the reflection of the antenna. So if you get the telescoping antenna, you can actually get the full uh, wattage out of your radio that it's supposed to be able to do. This next part, this is the uh, Roly Poly Dump Pouch by Maxpedition. Uh, this is a pretty cool dump pouch. You hook it onto your belt, or thread it onto your belt, and then tie this around your thigh and you've got this large dump sack that you can just throw whatever you want in here. Spare mags that you use, uh, maybe a rabbit or a pheasant or something you got. I mean, you could fit a whole pheasant in here. It's quite, quite large. Uh, but the nice part is you can just roll it up when you're not using it and it's not taking up too much room on your boat. It's a little bit bulky, but it's sticking out to the side and so it's not too bad. Uh, but I really enjoy using this for my trips and to uh, keep spare items and random items and that I find like a tinder or something like that. On the bottom here, I'm not gonna pull them up, just got a couple of uh, night trial gloves that I also use for uh, if some kill or something has a parasite that I'm worried about or dealing with some sick person or something like that, I've got uh, night trial gloves disposables that I can use. I've also got some thicker ones that are a bit stronger that are I think uh, seven mil or nine mil gloves uh, these ones over here these are like mechanics nitrile gloves so they're really strong and uh, you can keep using them and rewash them and stuff like that so it's, those are those gloves that I've got there then I've got some Kevlar gloves because <laughs> if you watched a couple of my videos I'm a bit prone to cutting myself with knives and so I uh, wanted to be a little bit extra safe and have some Kevlar gloves which will help a little bit with cutting. Kevlar's not the best at uh, dealing with cuts, but uh, it's more of a ballistics thing. But these are kind of my work gloves because they've got some nice uh, toughness on here, but it's also got Kevlar for uh, cutting with knives and uh, whittling and carving and things like that. On the side here, I've got some shooting sticks. This is mostly, I keep these in here because when I go hunting, I need them but uh, most of the time I probably won't bring these around with me. Uh, for anybody that's never seen shooting sticks before, these just unfold and provide kind of a nice tripod. You can lay your rifle across like that. Uh, oh, sorry, it's probably not in frame. I'll cross it like that and you can uh, still shoot accurately so you can kind of turn yourself into a tripod and use these to uh, steady your shot in case you're shooting at a longer distance. 
These do have a little sheath they come in so you can uh, put them on your hip or something like that so you can still uh, carry them around with you which is pretty nice. This is my heavy duty knife. This is the uh, Pathfinder PLSK1. Uh, it's a really large heavy duty knife that, uh, it, I mean, it's very thick and it's got a nice Scandinavian grind so it's really simple to sharpen up. But uh, it's high carbon steel so I gotta keep it oiled so that's, why it, that's the reason it looks like it does. I use some uh, fix and wax which they sell at the Pathfinder store. That stuff is just wonderful for items like this and uh, uh, helping reduce rust and things like that. Uh, but keep it in a Kydex sheath. It's got a, I have a spare ferro rod on here. Uh, this is mostly the back of one that I, I keep with me. I've got some uh, sewing needles taped to the back of here. I don't really like this all that much, but I have it this way and I need to come up with a better method of storing these needles. I ended up having one of these kind of come loose and stabbing me in the leg. It took me a sec to figure out why I was being stabbed in the leg. I've got a really large ferro rod here. Uh, this guy is... This guy is uh, $16 on eBay right now, and uh, I really like it. I, I find that at the store you spend 16 bucks and you get one about this size. But if you go online on eBay, you can get a much larger one. And the nice part about the larger one is a little bit easier to grip, and you have a lot more control over what's happening. You can get uh, longer strokes, you can get some more sparks off of it. So I really like having the longer ferro rod. Uh, this. Pathfinder knife, by the way, is $300. So this is a very expensive bushcraft knife, and you really don't need to spend this much money, but I was single and I had extra money, and so I got myself a nice bushcraft knife. Uh, then I've got this Flex Cut Carbon Jack. This guy, I got it for, uh, I think it was like $130, $130, but it's just pretty pricey for a little multi-tool kind of like this but it is extremely good quality for its purpose, which is intended for carving and whittling and things like that. Um, the nice part about this is I've seen some that have just uh, an individual blade per handle, and that ends up being really bulky and heavy, so this has several different blades on it. So this is probably one of the most common ones to use is the straight blade because I use this guy, you can do huge strokes and things like that, but the really fine little details that you need for carving a spoon or something like that, uh, it gets a little bit difficult and you can end up taking off way too much with this. Uh, but this is easy to sharpen and just absolutely razor sharp. Uh, it comes with a stropping block, which I'll show in a minute. Uh, another important feature is the hook knife. So for anybody who hasn't done any spoon carving, I've got a video on that in my channel. You guys can watch that uh, as I uh, learn how to carve spoons. It actually worked out pretty well. But this is useful for carving out the bowl of the spoon because when you have a straight knife and you're trying to carve out the bowl, it's really hard to uh, get to the side and cut it out because you just you have a straight knife the whole time. But if you have a curved knife, you can get the bottom of this into there and really carve it out into an actual spoon shape. So this has got a couple of other uh, knives in here. I think it's got six total, like this uh, straight gouge here that you could push into and get a lot of wood out and things like that. But I find that the gouge corp, the hook knife, and the straight knife are the ones that I use the most. So that's it for the uh, knife pocket right here. So I'll just keep this on the side, and this knife is usually on my hip anyways. I throw my Leatherman in there when I put the uh, uh, PLSK1 on my hip because I, I much prefer that for any bushcraft stuff. On the front here, got my food pretty tightly tied on there. This is just some Mountain House meals in a dry bag. Um, beef stew. These taste really good, very light. Uh, the only problem with them is I find that the instructions say, oh, you know, just 20 or 10 minutes or something to, with boiling water and it'll be good. But I find that half an hour or so is what it really takes for these to soak and to actually have the proper texture and things like that to be a little bit more palatable. But the nice part about freeze-dried is it's really lightweight. I'm not carrying around extra 
water in the, the food itself and they last years and years in less than optimal temperatures. So I can run around with these and I'll have days worth of food uh, with them. And uh, I think I find that about the Mountain House ones, I get about two meals out of each one. So I end up pouring it into my cup to uh, save the Mylar bag because if you soak the whole thing and you don't finish it, then you've got food that's going to start to spoil. On the top part of the bag, once I get it open, is this secondary pack where I've got uh, quite a few uh, niceties, what do they call them, uh, snivel gear, I think is what a lot of people call them. Uh, this is mosquito spray to keep me from going insane with mosquitoes and keep me from getting too sick. I've got uh, toothpaste and a toothbrush. A lot of people probably would skip over this and say that's not necessary, but that would be true for a 72 hour kit. But I think if you're out there for months, you really should take care of your teeth, especially if you're going to be in, uh, maybe you're in a situation where you're not gonna have a dentist for a long time and get you, I mean, a couple of months ruin your teeth and uh, be miserable because the only way to deal with tooth problems without a dentist is to just tear it out and probably not even tear it out very well. This is, I got a bit of toilet paper there. This is a cotton bandana. This is from the Pathfinder school as well and Pathfinder store, sorry. And they, it has a couple of different tracks from different animals. So here's like an otter and things like that or a cat, just so you can kind of see what they, the animals look like. But I got the olive green one and it's cotton, which is really nice. Then, as you probably noticed, I've got some toilet paper in here. Not a whole lot of it, just uh, enough to deal with um, a few days uh, worth. Then I've got this pocket fishing kit. So I looked around locally trying to find a bottle like this, but there is just nothing that's this shape. And this shape is perfect for what this is. So right under here, I've got some fishing line that's wrapped around and then covered in this bicycle inner tube so that it doesn't uh, fray and unravel inside my pack. But uh, it comes like this, but it has some cheaper line. I pulled off the cheaper line they had on here and put in some better line. The line itself is actually anchored inside of here so that it's not going to come off. And even if you unspool the entire thing, it's still gonna be uh, anchored onto here. It comes with two bobbers, two small bobbers. These are uh, good little bobbers. I haven't gotten to use them yet, but uh, that, I'm planning on doing that on my trip. I've got uh, six uh, leaders here. These are for putting on the end of a fish hook. I'm sorry, the end of a fishing line with a hook on it so that if you have a fish that'll bite through it or something like that, bite through the fishing line, then the fish won't be able to go through this wire. But these are, their primary use is for uh, snares. Uh, they have a nice spinner on here so that even if the animal moves around, it won't get the wire too twisted up and destroyed. Uh, and maybe I could use it one or two more times than that. As far as I know, snares just get destroyed when an animal encounters them. And so you probably can't use them again. So hopefully the swivel will help uh, extend the life of these snares here. This was not part of the fishing kit. I put that in there myself. Get out the hooks. These are the hooks and bobber, or I'm sorry, hooks and weights that it comes with. That came with some uh, really big, let me pull one to the side here, really big hooks. So this is probably, uh, the places I typically am is with small streams and things like that. We don't really have any humongous rivers in Utah, at least where, near where I live. So this uh, hook is a bit too large for my purposes, but I'm keeping it in there because it really doesn't weigh much. And then I, I went to the store and I got some hooks that I could actually use, which are some small little eagle hooks here. These only cost like five bucks or something like that. And these are more of the size of fish that I tend to run into. I put in an unopened razor blade here so that uh, if for some reason I only had this and not a knife, I would have a backup uh, uh, gutting tool and uh, something to cut fishing line with and stuff like that. So this is a more of a backup little knife. So I haven't had a chance to use this uh, fishing kit yet. 
uh, mostly because I got it during the winter and I don't really, didn't really want to go ice fishing with it but uh, I am really excited to, I'm going to go find a nice stream and uh, test this out and see how well it actually works. I bet it's going to work just fine, I mean you really don't need a huge fishing setup but uh, to do any good fishing but this is for uh, smaller fish. I think this is like a 30 pound line so really not an enormous fish but I mean 30 pound if I got something like that that'd be pretty amazing. Then I have a water purifying straw. Uh, I don't really like this one. I misunderstood what it was when I purchased it but it works just fine. Uh, it uses iodine in this tablet down here to kill any bacteria and pathogens inside of the water and then it goes through this carbon uh, activated carbon filter so that you don't really get the taste of the iodine and so you just drink on this end and put this into a creek or something like that. I have this if for some reason I'm unable to light a fire or can't light a fire for safety reasons so I have this so that I can drink water without uh, my primary method of dealing with water which is boiling. Then I've got some uh, antacids here uh, these are like from a gas station if you guys haven't ever seen these just in their little uh, medical corner that they usually have in gas stations uh, these are great for dealing with uh, acid reflux and things like that and I really need those especially when I'm not eating properly because I end up getting a lot of heartburn or something I learned that lesson with a uh, different uh, practice bug out and I learned that eating an MRE gives me horrible horrible acid. Um, anyways this is some Gorilla Tape. This is a, I think it's called Gorilla Tape to go. It's just a small roll of Gorilla Tape. Uh, I've never used this so it's just a complete roll all by itself which is uh, good for a whole ton of purposes. I mean it's basically duct tape but a little bit uh, stronger. I've even seen people starting fires with it. I haven't ever practiced that myself but uh, I think that's everything in this bag. The top part right here. Next we go inside the pack and the things inside the pack are things I should only have to access once a day or so besides my meal. Uh, right here is a bag of electronics, uh, charger and cables and things like that. So. Uh, let me pull this open a little bit and go through just quickly over the items in here. This is a battery charger for 18650 size. So the large battery that I pulled out of my flashlight, it can do large batteries like that. But it can, but it can also do small AAAs and AA rechargeables as well. And this has a 12 volt input so that I can charge it with my solar panel. This is my ham radio charging dock. Unfortunately, I just cannot find a ham radio that can directly be charged, so I have to carry around this extra dock to charge it. I'm not willing to do the double A's or, or triple A's with a ham radio because they really don't last as long as a lithium battery will. So I have this extra uh, couple of ounces here, that's probably more like two ounces or something like that, to charge my ham radio with. I've got several cables to charge different USB devices and uh, my cell phone and things like that. Uh, there's also a couple of uh, uh, ham radio uh, ear uh, bud adapters in there so that you can plug it directly into your ear instead of have it just shouting out the whole time. Uh, this is some ham radio uh, configuration cables. So my car one uses this guy and my uh, portable uh, and uh, ham radio uses uh, this guy over here. But I also have a, uh, let me just pull it out, it's kind of difficult to explain, but it has a uh, duplication cable which is pretty cool little cable. So you put this in between, this between two ham radios and you can transmit the configuration from one to the other. So if I ran into a family member that doesn't have the same configuration of frequencies that I do, I can transmit my configuration over to them without a computer using just this cable. Pretty nice little feature that uh, most modern ham radios, I know uh, Woshan doesn't, I think Baofeng also has that uh, configuration copying ability like that. Alright, 
The next part of my bag is this foldable solar panel here. So this is a 27 watt solar panel that uh, has some mildly flexible panels on here and uh, it does USB uh, 5 volts and 12 volt output as well. Uh, it ends up being a variable between 15 and 18 volts so uh, make sure your device can handle that. I have a uh, battery in here that it does successfully charge though. So here's the two USB ports that it has uh, and then it also has this 12 volt plug here. So for anybody who doesn't know, 12 volt is what your car cigarette lighter does. So this solar panel can recharge a car slowly, but it can recharge a car or any devices that could be charged in a car as well, which is pretty nice. Then I've got this 20,000 milliamp hour backup battery. So the reason I have this is because Connecting all of my devices and things to charge off of this panel is pretty difficult uh, to walk around with or something like that. So I have this so that I can plug the solar panel and have it hanging on the uh, outside of my pack and then charging just this. And then I can use this to charge my devices with. So uh, this is a bit overkill for the devices I have, but I have this solar panel and battery in here to charge my things and my wife's electronics as well. She has her own bug out bag and she does not have a solar panel uh, inside of it because she's not quite as big as I am and so she can't carry nearly as much weight as I can. So I carry this extra weight so that she doesn't have to. But uh, I've used this guy quite a bit and I find that it works really well. Uh, and FYI, uh, it actually really does make a difference to point this, angle it at the sun. Uh, I've noticed quite a huge difference in the voltages the, and the amount of uh, amps that you get out of this when you point it properly at the sun. So monitoring this every 20 minutes or so is a pretty good investment if you really need to get that charge done. Next part is my cooking bag. In this I've got uh, quite a few necessities and a couple of niceties in here. Because I've been on a lot of camping trips and I can't tell you how nice it is to have a cup and uh, a plate as well as right there. But this is a 40 ounce clean canteen. This is a steel uh, canteen that I use to boil water with. So this is my, my primary method of sterilization of water is boiling because it's probably the most renewable that I've got. Uh, you can see it's all sorts of charred up from being in fires lots and lots of times. Uh, this is the cup that I use in tandem with it. This cup is pretty nice because it's got a little handle that you can use on the side. I usually take my uh, mountain house, pour about half of it in here, pour water into this, and then uh, use this little lid that the Pathfinder Source sells. They have this nice lid that works with the, this is a uh, GSI, I think is what it's called. Hold on just a sec. Yeah, this is the GSI stainless cup. But this lid that the Pathfinder store sells does fit it. And so this helps retain that heat from the boiled water and allows you to uh, get your food moist again. But this is good because it's got a strainer here. And these slits on the side here are actually so you can hang this from the uh, bottle hanger that Dave Canterbury came up with. Uh, this is pretty clever of him. Uh, you use this fish mouth spreader here and you can drill a couple of holes in your bottle like I did and then you can just hang your cup over a fire. I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit so it's at the right distance. And then you can hang your uh, cup over a fire if you needed to but then it also, these slits here allow you to have the lid on while it's uh, being placed over a fire or something. So this ends up turning into a small pot which is pretty pretty nice and a, a nice double feature for that. Uh, this bottle hanger also works with this canteen so you can hang this over the fire and get it in a hotter spot uh, to boil your water faster. Really good combination and the nice part about this is this actually slides right in there and uh, holds the uh, bottle in pretty well. Next part I have a titanium spork here. This is a uh, uh, great little addition to make eating 
much nicer without having to use your hands. Uh, it's got a fork and a spoon and then a little serration here that you can use kind of as a knife on just some simple foods. And uh, I really like this, makes a big difference. And then I also have this uh, two ounce titanium plate. So I looked around at steel plates and they were like 10 ounces and things like that just for a steel plate and I really just didn't want to carry those extra ounces and I know a lot of people are like who cares it's just a couple of ounces but this pack's already too heavy it weighs 35 pounds without water and that's already more than I want to carry uh, and you know that's not even without the firearm and ammo right so this is already very heavy uh, but this a plate is so nice for eating with and it's also good for frying up things. So if you have a large piece of meat or something like that, you really can't cook it well in this unless you chop it up and boil it. But frying up a nice piece of meat on here is well worth the extra two ounces that I have to carry to have this plate. So I'm gonna put this back in and we'll move on to the water bag. Oh, and I forgot the uh, lid that comes with the clean canteen here. So this becomes a backup carry of water, but a much more sturdy than uh, just about anything you can find, really. So I leave the uh, top off of my bottle because it gets wet and I don't want to have that mildew inside of what I'm drinking, so I keep that lid off to keep all that moisture, moisture out. No, I don't want to have this inside there because that's going to bounce all over the place. Okay, next is my MSR dromedary bag. This is the best water bladder I've seen. Uh, I've had several camelbacks, probably like four of them, and they all break on the edges or right around the seal up here. And it just drove me nuts with how much money they cost and how often they break. This is an enormous water bladder that uh, this holds three gallons or 10 liters, which is an enormous amount of water, way more than I would normally carry. You know, I'll probably carry a gallon or something, or you know, half that uh, for a day use because that's a ton of water. But this can handle three gallons, uh, which is useful for a couple of purposes. If uh, in Utah, we have a lot of deserty areas where you really can't find water. So if I need to load up a couple of gallons, I can do that and uh, have spare water for me or other people. Um, but it's also useful for taking a shower with. You can boil some water and pour it into here, uh, not quite rolling boil, but I've got it to where the, whole, the water is steamy and I poured it into here and had no problems with it and then you can use it to take a shower. Um, it does not come with the drinking hose. I'm not quite sure why they sell them separately, but they do. Uh, the, this is about $45 and this is like 15 bucks. So together it ends up being about $60 for this, but this is weaved nylon that's uh, impregnated in, with uh, nylon that's waterproof. So this thing is extremely robust, had no problems with it. I even, this one, I accidentally left it on the roof of my car <laughs> like an idiot and I drove away and it fell off and bashed into the side of a sidewalk and it was totally fine. I found it a couple days later and it was totally fine even though it had been thrown off of a car. So these things are really tough. Next thing I've got is my repair kit. This is the just the bag that I use to maintain repair tools. Uh, this is a toothbrush for scrubbing uh, knives or firearms and things like that. Not for my teeth because it's covered in lead. This is the stropping block that comes with the flex cut carving jack. The nice part about this is that it has shaped ridges for all of the uh, different knives on there and also has a nice uh, block or a little section of leather here for really stropping that um, them the knives really well. But this is uh, only it's probably like less than an ounce but it's really useful for really maintaining the edges on that. And when I was carving with it I really couldn't find a way to strop it easily with a belt without that. The flex cut carbon jack also comes with some nice stropping compound so I keep that in there as well, which can be useful for all of my blades. Then I have a diamond rod. This diamond rod works pretty good. It's the uh, 
the uh, Lansky Tactical Diamond Rod. Uh, it's got a, I think it's a carbide uh, sharpener on the back here, but this is really only good if you've taken a big chunk out of your knife or you're getting rid of some burrs or something like that. Uh, you really should be maintaining your knife with the diamond rod or a belt or something, a leather uh, strap or something like that to uh, maintain your edge. You really don't want to be getting down to where you have to actually use this thing because it's just going to tear off tons of metal and wear your knife out. Then I've got the uh, blow back adapter for the uh, drinking straw. So the purifying straw, uh, if you need to uh, uh, clean it out with water, you can use this to blow on a little bit better. But uh, this really isn't necessary, but it weighs so little, I wanted to make sure that I had the features, the full features of that drinking straw. This is some backup O-rings and things for flashlights. Uh, I've got a, quite a few little bags of that in here. Then I've got some fix and wax. This fix and wax is wonderful. It uh, is useful for waterproofing uh, boots or something like that, or uh, a knife. Like my knife is high carbon steel, so I have to con have to keep it oiled, otherwise it will rust if it left for an extended period of time. So I make sure every time I'm done using it at the end of the day or end of a camping trip that I make sure to re-wax uh, and oil it. This is. Uh, made out of deer tallow, beeswax, and vitamin E. So that's, it's actually apparently edible. I've never ate, eaten it myself, but apparently you can eat it. So that's pretty cool. Then I've got a spool of thread. This is some polyester uh, thread, which I was hoping was nice and strong. And I've used it quite a bit already, and it seems to be nice and strong. But uh, this is useful for repairing all manner of clothing and uh, tools and things like that. I do have some spare, more spare O-rings and things for flashlights. These are all just for the different flashlights that I've got. I do have a backup mini lighter in here. I never use this one. It's there just deep in my pack in case something gets wet and my other lighter doesn't work for some reason so that I have that backup if necessary. I find that keeping things in little bags is extremely useful. So instead of just dumping everything in the middle of my bag, I keep it in little pouches and then dump it in the middle of my bag. So this is the repair bag, this is the electronics bag, this is the cooking bag. But that way I don't have cables and things all tangled up around each other all throughout the bag. Next thing I've got is this Thermarest uh, sleeping pad. This is their, uh, I think it's called the Trail Scout. It's like a $60 sleeping mat. Uh, a lot of people probably think this is unnecessary. Just do some pine boughs or something like that and you're going to be nice and comfy. But Utah, there's quite a few places where we do not have pine trees, especially with the beetles that killed most of the pine trees. So this is useful for getting a good night's sleep. I think carrying around the extra probably two pounds or whatever that this is, is worth it to get a good night's sleep so that I can uh, focus and be alert during the day. At the bottom of this bag, I've got two Gorilla drum liners for trash bags. These are three mil, really strong, uh, 55 gallon uh, drum liners for, this is really useful for making a uh, poncho or uh, carrying water, or carrying uh, game, or carrying uh, uh, waterproofing a shelter. I mean, it has a ton and ton of uses. I mean, you could you could fill one of these up with leaves or something, and hop in it to keep yourself warm, and to keep those to have those leaves around you to keep yourself warm. I mean, limits your imagination, right? And the nice part about keeping all these things separate is that I can pack it up pretty quickly with all of the items so that I don't end up trying to find items on the ground or something like that. I can just have them in packs and pull out one or two things that I need and then repack it all quickly and be ready to go. On the bottom of my pack here, this section, here, let me pull this off so you guys can see. 
right here is my sleeping bag. I don't have a super fancy sleeping bag. Would like to get a nicer one in the future. My wife has a really nice one because she gets pretty cold during the night. So I got her a really nice sleeping bag. That was like a almost $400 sleeping bag. But she was, we like to go camping, but she was just miserable sometimes. And I wanted to make sure that any weather she could be comfortable and have fun and go camping. So she's got that really good sleeping bag, but I've just got like a $30, $30, $40 sleeping bag in there. So there will be a few items that I'm bringing with me on my trip that aren't uh, typically in my bug out bag. For example, uh, I've got this Spot GPS. This is a pretty cool little GPS. Uh, what it does is you hop on their website and you can predefine messages uh, on their website to that this will send so this contacts the satellite up in up in the up in the sky up in space and it will uh send a predefined message so you can uh so you've got this okay button right here you can press and hold that and once this light up here starts to blink let me turn this on you guys can see all the lights that it's got on it you can send an i'm okay message and you can configure that uh, how you want it's like a, I think you got a max of like 200 250 characters that you can make it send and it will send a text message or an email for you so I have this configured so that it sends an I'm okay to my wife and so she knows that uh, my GPS location and where I'm at and she knows that I'm okay it has a tracking feature so that when you're walking around it will send as a accelerometer in here and it will sense when you're moving and every 15 minutes it will contact the satellite and say, this is my new location with a tracking thing. So people can watch you walk around, drive around, things like that. Uh, I use it on my trips all the time. And then it has a custom message. You can make this do whatever you want, but I have it say mission accomplished, which means that uh, if I'm going hunting means I got the kill, I got the game that I was going for. If my bug out trip that I'm doing uh, this weekend, it'll say, you know, I'm coming home or something like that. It's also got this flip up here. You can flip this up and push this button. This is a I need help button. You can configure this to call uh, uh, family members or something like that. So I've got this to message about six people that I need help. And uh, I told them that um, if it's nothing, you know, if, if it's nothing super serious, I'm gonna be pushing this button. You know, I told him to assume like I'm having car trouble or something like that. Uh, but if I'm really in serious trouble, you know, I, I I don't know, I'm stuck in the way out in the middle of nowhere and I've pushed this and nobody's come, you know, and it's been like a day or two or something like that. Then I can push, you can uh, flip this side open and do SOS and call the search and rescue people for the uh, uh, area. And I have this taped down so that I don't actually press this because apparently it costs like, I don't know, they said like sometimes it costs $150,000 to have those people show up. And so I really wanted to make sure this was taped down so that I would not call them by accident. But I think tearing this off in an emergency really wouldn't be that difficult. But as you can see here, it just blinks. And right now it's not doing anything. So it will sit for days and days like this. It doesn't, it's not contacting the satellite or anything like that right now. So if I turn on the tracking on this, then I can push and hold this. And it turns on tracking. So this is gonna try to uh, contact the server uh, with, I'm sorry, the satellite with GPS. So it's gonna start blinking green. But since I'm in my house, it shouldn't be able to contact the server. And in a bit, this will probably start blinking red saying that it can't contact the server. If you see that, that you, I'm sorry, the satellite, uh, if you see this blink in red, that usually means uh, you're inside a cave or something like that. Or I've had it happen one time when I was in really thick pine trees and it couldn't contact the satellite, which was pretty surprising. But I usually just clip this onto uh, my uh, pants or something like that and just walk around. And if I need help for some reason, I can, call family members or something like that. And this doesn't use cell phone because I go to a lot of places where I have no cell phone coverage. And so this works all over the United States. And I mean, they show their map on their, their website and it's like almost the entire world minus the some of the oceans. But uh, you can use this to contact people without cell service. It's really nice. So, so that blinked red because it couldn't do it. And it'll uh, probably try again later or something, but I'm gonna hold this down and turn it off. So this is uh, just an example, and I want to do a quick little 
overview of this. Oh, the unit is $150. The service is $150 annually. So every year you have to pay $150, but then you get to send unlimited messages and unlimited tracking every 15 minutes with this guy, which is really good. Anyway, so then I've got some firearms that I'm going to be bringing with me. I'm probably going to bring my shotgun, and uh, that's my... Uh, Shotguns are probably, a 12 gauge shotgun is probably one of the most versatile weapons that you can own and so I'm going to bring that and that's going to be for hunting. But uh, this is my bug out bag that I've got. I've put a lot of money into this. This is probably about $1,500 or so in this gear and I do not think anybody needs to spend $1,500 on a bug out bag. That is a ton of money. I built this when I was single and I had a lot of extra money. And so I uh, recommend that you get things similar to this, but you know, I have a $300 bushcraft knife that is over the top, but it's gonna last me a lifetime, right? So you can spend, you know, $50 on a, a bushcraft knife and make sure you know it's full tang and uh, 90 degree spine and a good type of steel and easy to sharpen and that thing's gonna last you years and years and years and it'll work just fine. So this is, an over-the-top extended bug out bag. Uh, over-the-top for some people's standards. Mine, I would say that this is kind of the minimum. You know, I, there's things I'd like to put in here, but I don't because I don't, I already, I'm already carrying, you know, 50 pounds if I throw in my firearm and some ammo in this, right? It's already very heavy. Uh, one thing I am missing out on is some clothing in here. I do need to work on and get some clothing in here, but uh, the type of type of trips that I go on, I don't really need to have my clothing. Uh, it only lasts a couple of days or something like that, so it's not too bad. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video here. I hope it didn't go too long, but there's a ton more reasons why I picked the things that I did that I didn't cover in this video. Uh, just a lot of trial and error and uh, um, experimentation, realizing that I'm doing things wrong and that I need some sort of different gear. Uh, so anyways, I would really encourage you guys to go out, take your bag, and if you don't have one, get started with just a uh, you know, flashlight and a knife and a ferro rod and a sleeping bag and some food or, and some water and stuff like that. You really don't need all of these things to do a 72 hour kit. 72 hour kit, kit can be very simple. Make sure you guys go out and try your bag because you're going to experiment and you're going to realize that you screwed up and that you need something or that you forgot something and uh, so that you can keep it in your bag. But I like having the bag because everything is in here. There's only a couple of, I only have to do two steps to get this bag ready to go. I put in my electronics and I fill up my water and I'm done. That's the only thing I have to do to this bag. So the reason I don't fill up the water is because the water tastes awful sitting in bags for months and months. So I keep it outside of the bag so that I can just pour it in and uh, get going. So this bag can, can be gone in a few minutes with. Um, but you guys need to go out and try it and perfect and rework your bag because you're going to see a lot of flaws and things that, and things that you forgot in it. So I really encourage you to go do a mock bug out and uh, learn a lot more about yourself and about the equipment that you need. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to leave some questions in the uh, comments below and I'll try to answer, uh, you know, especially if you have reasons of why I picked a specific item over other items and I'll try to describe why I like that. But a lot of it is personal taste and experience and just the way I've uh, learned to use items and to uh, learn to get along without items. So anyways, I hope you guys like this and please uh, remember to like and subscribe.